Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Abe here with a tutorial on how to do Final Cut GoPro workflow. So I've picked out my GoPro file. Um, I'm just going to show you the total workflow with one file, um, but you'll use the same techniques for all your different files in your entire edit. So the first stage, before we even open up Final Cut, we need to transcode the video because we can't actually drop this MPEG-4 into Final Cut. So we use a program called MPEG Stream Clip. It's a free download. Uh, we can go to File, Open File, or you can just drag it directly onto that little dice thing. Um, and here you can either export the entire thing, transcode it straight out, or the great thing about this program is you can select in and outs. So you can scroll through, uh, you select in points with I, you can press spacebar to play, and I'll just scroll through right around here, alright I don't need anything after that, out. Now I need to export so I can go to file, export to QuickTime or command E. Uh, this looks a little daunting but it's super simple. Um, if you have Final Cut Pro 7, you have the Apple ProRes family of codecs. So we can scroll up here, there's LT, Proxy, 422, HQ. They're all different uh, bit rates. And LT and Proxy are good if you're using a laptop. I always use 422. Uh, regular, it's a higher bit rate than Proxy and LT, but I know that my GoPro stuff is going to look the exact same as straight out of the camera through ProRes. You slide quality up to 100%. And those of you actually without uh, Final Cut Pro, I don't think Final Cut Express has the ProRes family. But what you can use, which is just as good, is the Apple Intermediate Codec, AIC. Um, so basically, anytime I refer to ProRes, if you're on Final Cut Express, just replace ProRes with Intermediate Codec, and you'll be all good. All right, so frame size, uh, it's 1280 by 720. We'll just leave that how it is. Frame rate, I don't want to change it. I just want it to stay how it is, so I'll leave that blank. Interlay scaling, I'm not changing the size, but I will uncheck that. Um, rotation, if you filmed it upside down, and you, even though GoPro has a new update for up D, um, sometimes I forget. So you can do 180 rotation. You can crop, so for 960 files, I always crop 120 from top and bottom, so I get down to my uh, 720 frame size. Anyway, I can click Make Movie and it'll transcode right there, or um, if you're doing a bunch of files at once, a handy tool is to use the batch list, Command B to open it up, and that will, you just leave that there, and when you hit Command E for export, instead of exporting and converting right there, because it does take a little bit of time, um, you can hit to batch and it'll save it into your batch list. You get all your files and all your selects lined up for your edit, and then you click go, and it'll do them all at once. Um, but I'm not going to use that because I'm just doing one clip, so Command E saves all my stuff because I haven't closed the program, and I do make movie. Um, I've made a folder on my desktop called GoPro Selects, uh, it's a really good idea to organize all your stuff by edit. Um, so if I was doing a Thanksgiving edit, I'd do Thanksgiving edit selects. And then I'd save all of my files from StreamClip in there. So I will do, name this Chris Backflip Epic. Save. There it goes. Converts. And now it'll be converting into a file format that uh, Final Cut really likes and all the editing will be very smooth and won't have to render. All right, so that's done. I can go ahead and close MPEG Stream Clip. Now, before I open up Final Cut, I want to convert the frame rate from 59.94 frames per second down to 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second, whatever I'm going to edit in. Uh, that way you can get smooth, slow motion. So I'll open up this program called Cinema Tools, which comes with the Final Cut Pro suite. Just hit continue, cancel. Um, you can either batch conform, so if you have a whole folder of stuff after you've done all your selects, you hit batch conform, select the folder, and it'll go ahead and do all of your stuff. But I'm just going to open clip. Chris backflip epic. There it is. Now down here, there's a conform button, and you hit conform. 
Now, the current frame rate is 59.94 frames per second. I was in R3. I want to conform down to, I can do 2398, 2997. Um, these are both common frame rates. 2398 is more of a film look. That's what I do all my editing in. Um, and I just hit conform. It does it instantaneously, and it saves it as the same file. It's not changing anything. It just um, tells the computer how to play it back. So I can go ahead and close that. I don't have to save anything. I can open up my GoPro selects, click on this, and now when I play it back, it's going to be in slow motion. And that's how we get that super slow motion with our GoPro files. So what I do is I go ahead and conform everything before I open it up in Final Cut to my base frame rate. And um, that way, anytime I want to do normal speed, I just speed it up. So let's go ahead and open up Final Cut Pro finally. All right, so I can go ahead and get my files in here, import files, Chris Backflip Epic. There's that one file. Now, an easy way to make sure your sequence settings are what you need is you can just take one clip that's the right settings and drag it down into your timeline. It'll say, do you want to conform your sequence settings to match the clip? And you say yes. Now, when your sequence settings match your clip settings, uh, it's a really seamless editing environment. Um, but to show you how to actually set up a sequence without dragging it in, uh, let's go to File, New Sequence, select this, and go to Sequence Settings. Now, frame size, we're doing 720p, so you just do HDTV 720p, pixel aspect ratio, square, field dominance, none, editing time base. So I conformed all of my files to 2398, so I want to match my frame rate in my sequence. Now when I go to compressor, this is really important, I need to match my compression type that I use for all my files. So I used Apple ProRes 422. Um, if you use Apple Intermediate Codec, you'd want to match that down here. There it is, but I'm doing ProRes 422. So I click OK. Now that sequence is right. If I drag a clip in, it won't ask me to conform because it's already the exact same. Awesome. So I can do all my editing in here. I can make some cuts. I'll drag that there, snap that there, land it, after bang. Awesome. Okay. Quick fade out. All right. Now, um, before you export, um, you want to do some color correcting. I'm going to go a lot more into detail in another tutorial on color correcting, but just so you guys are aware, uh, I use the video filters color correction, color corrector three way. So I apply that to every clip before. One other thing to note is that since we conformed all of our clips to 2398 in the beginning, they're all going to play back in slow motion. Um, this is awesome, but sometimes we want to play back stuff normal speed and maybe get your audio back to normal. Um, it's super quick and easy. All we got to do is right click on the file, go to change speed, um, where it says rate 100%. Um, if you started at 59.94 and you conform to 23.98, you'll do 250% to get back to normal speed. And if you did um, 59.94 down to 29.97, you'll do 200% to get back to normal. I'm going to do 250, and I'm going to uncheck frame blending. That basically just makes ghosty frames between your motion. Um, this is usually good in some time lapses, but anytime you're just getting back your stuff to normal speed, you don't want frame blending on. Uh, if I play this back, it'll play back in normal speed. And the audio is correct. And a good rule of thumb when you're editing is to never go below your base frame rate. So we conformed everything to 2398 and our sequence is in 2398. If I go to change speed, I never want to go below the 100% mark, since that's the lowest speed that we have all of our frames in our video. If I go below that, it'll start adding duplicate frames. The only way out of that is if you have a program like Motion or After Effects or Twixter that can do frame interpolation, then you can get down to lower speeds. 
All right, so we are ready to actually export our video. What we want to do is go up to File, Export, QuickTime Movie. Now what this is going to do is just export a straight QuickTime Movie of the exact sequence settings. So we're going to make a Apple ProRes 422 file of our edit. It's going to be huge because ProRes 422 is pretty large, but um, it's uh, how we want to get our full quality out. So I'm going to save this as Chris Backflip Edit. Settings, current video settings include audio and video, uh, recompress all frames, sure, make movie self-contained, yes, and save. Now, if you have everything rendered and everything's the same codec and it's all happy, it'll be pretty quick. All right, so I'm done with Final Cut. Let's quit Final Cut Pro. Yes. Now, to get it onto the web, we need to compress it because an, a full Apple ProRes 422 edit is going to be way too big. So I'm going to use Compressor. Compressor comes with Final Cut Pro Suite. Uh, it's pretty simple to use. It'll give you a little pop-up here of all the presets. And it's got this handy little publish to YouTube, which has pretty good settings for YouTube. They've matched it up with what YouTube recommends. Um, but I'm going to cancel that and show you how to go through it uh, in the actual menu. All right, so I'm going to add file. I've got my Chris backflip edit load that in here it is you can scroll through make sure it's the right one and now it says drag settings and destinations here so if I swivel down if I go into the settings tab down here swivel down Apple swivel down other workflows swivel down web down at the bottom is YouTube sharing it says h264 at 8 megabits per second um, so that sounds about right now we just rename it here, Chris Backflip YouTube. And now we go over to the Destinations tab, swivel down Apple. There's a thing for desktop. You can add your own locations. I just drag up desktop into where it says Source. It'll say Desktop there. And then you just hit Submit. And the name doesn't really matter because it's just in here in Compressor. So I'll just hit Submit and it'll go ahead and start compressing all right so that finished and now we have a web compressed version of our edit uh, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned a lot uh, this is basically what I found to be the best workflow for um, the GoPro stuff and it's the same workflow that you'd use for any of the DSLR stuff as well. So if you guys are editing and mixing in footage with a 7D or a T2i, uh, you'll do all the same stuff, all the same settings uh, in Stream Clip, um, Cinema Tools for the rate change, and Final Cut for all the sequence settings. And if you don't have Final Cut Pro, um, Adobe Premiere CS5 actually has native DSLR editing, which also equates to native GoPro editing. So you don't need to do any transcoding, but I actually find the transcoding is a good step for setting up your edit, getting all of your selects in there, and, and sort of a pre-edit process. All right, thanks for checking out this tutorial, and stay tuned for more tutorials in the future. Make sure you subscribe to us to keep up with all the latest updates of tutorials and rad ski videos. If you have any questions, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash uscski, or at uscski on Twitter. This video tutorial was brought to you by the University of Southern California Ski and Snowboard Team.